this recent movement has been weighing very heavy at me, as it, ha as it has with uh, the black community. And yesterday I felt it was important to explain to the staff what it truly means because a lot is getting lost, you know, in the riots and in the social unrest. The, the simplest way I can explain it to folks who may not understand, and it's really about just understanding. Black folks are just saying, we matter. And what I said and what I'm saying is, just matter. Not more than any other race. Don't want to be less than any other race, but just matter and be equal. What really brought it home for me was I was sitting on the couch and Riley, a twin, one of my twins, started crying. And I almost didn't want to deal with it. So I got up and I said, I need to take the trash out. And I took the trash out. And then I came back. She was still crying. And I said, Riley, what's wrong? And then she leaned over to my lap. And Riley said, Dad, I don't want to die at an early age. So just imagine that for a second, your child at the age of eight saying, she doesn't want to die. And she said, I don't want to be killed by a police officer. And as a father, as a man, you're, you, you, you say, I'm not going to let that happen. And I said, Riley, I'm going to protect you. And she said, Dad, what if they kill you? I do want to say this. This is not a ploy for sympathy. This is this is black folks. I'm not. I don't. No one is asking for sympathy. You know, it's more understanding. Do you see it? Do you do you get it? Do you understand? And maybe some empathy. But we got to as a as a society, we all got to do it together. We all got to combat racism together. We all got to do it together. Uh, we all got to help fight police brutality. Uh, brutality. I just talked to one of my best friends from college who's been a police officer for 20 years. Just I, I called him today to check on him, to make sure Joe was okay. I, uh, my wife's, one of her best friends, who was in my wedding, also a retired police officer. You say that there are a lot of great police officers out there, but there are some that are out there that are out there that aren't so great, you know. Um, and it's not about it's not about those that are good. It's about those that are not in it for the right cause, not in it to serve and protect. You know, and, and for my daughter to lay in my lap, you know, to say, okay. I don't want to live a short life because she's heard about George Floyd and she knows his name and she heard him say, I can't breathe. Something has to be done about those that aren't great, who aren't in it to serve and protect. And I was excited yesterday when Shannon and the team asked how I felt, and I knew exactly what it meant when they asked me how I felt. That's why I felt comfortable, a little uneasy. It was difficult for me to share what I was sharing yesterday, but I felt okay with it because I knew that they cared. They genuinely care about me, you know? So, and that's, again, a lot of folks don't see color. And there are a lot of police officers that do not see color. They see a human being, but then there are others. So in, so in scouting, we're all, seen as scouts, you know, we don't see color, but I've also seen and heard of racism in scouting, you know, even in this council, you know, so as a council, we're not going to tolerate racism, we're not going to tolerate unequal treatment in Gulfstream Council, we're not. Uh, so when we do hear of or see unequal treatment, especially racism, 
we're gonna cut it out.